There's my wife, Robin. Wave so everybody can see you. There you are. Amen. Um, Pastor Adam is with the youth tonight, and Pastor Cabrera is in Texas. God bless Texas. God bless the Cabrera family. So you're going to receive something good tonight. Amen. Everybody smile real big because that will let me know you're not too depressed seeing me. Amen. That was a joke. All right. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 65, verse 2, O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Aren't you glad our God hears and answers our prayer? Our God is not deaf. He hears our cry. And so we're going to pray right now. Father God, we honor you in the name of Jesus. Father God, we I just lift up a hand to you to say I'm calling out to you. We cry out, Father God, in behalf of many who need your healing touch, who need protection, who need your intervention. We thank you, Father, that nothing is too hard for you. Thank you, Father God. We pray your strengthening power for Brother Lumley in the name of Jesus. This 87-year-old brother, he still wants to live. He still has a desire to live. We pray that he would be strengthened in his body, strengthened in his body inner man in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe that together in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, your word says that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. We speak the name of Jesus over every situation. We thank you, Father God, that Michael Ward has victory over pneumonia and he's on the mend. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah, for Susan's sister Carol, that she has the victory. We thank you, Father, that Bucky Wooten has the victory in the name of Jesus. Infection bows its knee to the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody say Jesus. We, it bows its name, its knee to the name of Jesus. We declare hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Every disease bows its knee to the name of Jesus tonight. We thank you, Father, for miracles here. We thank you for miracles for those watching online. We thank you, Father God. We pray for uh, Gerald Harris's son-in-law, David Cheek, having back surgery tomorrow. We pray, let, the, let, the, let your hand be on the doctor's hands. In Jesus' name, we plead the blood of Jesus over this surgery, that it would go well, and, and the doctors would be able to do what, what they need to do and not do any harm. We plead the blood of Jesus over that surgery in, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray for Patricia. We thank you that your favor is on her, that your blessing is on her children in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that Adam Skelton, we thank you that he is in right standing with you. We decree it by, with the voice of faith. We see him right with you with the eye of faith in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That coughing in Avery has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. We decree that Geronica and Daniel, that the, 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 the sentence that man has given is ripped off of them. And that they, they are who God says they are. We thank you, Father God, for the miracle in their eyes. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness. We decree something good is going to happen to them. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Let's praise God right now. Father, we praise you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. And Father, everything that we, we've just touched on a few needs, but we thank you that you supply all of our need. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you. You provide. You protect. You heal. You restore. We give you glory tonight, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. You are our helper, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, everybody, say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't let the devil muzzle you. Amen. Now, Doylette's not muzzled by any devil. Amen. She, you, you know, when you, Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said, no man can doubt if he will learn to shout. Uh, you like that? He, Smith Wigglesworth said, no man can doubt if he learns to shout. Well, before the shout can come out, it's got to come in. Well, how do you get the shout in you? Through the word of God. You're here tonight. Glory to Jesus. And so the shout is going to come in you. And we're going to have an opportunity to shout at the end. Amen. And then the devil is going to flee. Well, I, I tell you what, the devil's scared right now. Amen. Yes, Lane. Father, we declare that cancer bows its knee to the name of Jesus. You foul devil, we curse you and we command you to get out of his body in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that your healing power is flowing in him. And we ask, Father, that the chemo would only do good and would not destroy his body. We put the blood of Jesus on these treatments. We put the blood of Jesus on his body in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Well, this is going to be good tonight, so get ready. This is not going to be a deep theological message. But I have got one word to press on to your soul. Are you ready for it? One word. Victory. Victory. Everybody say victory. Victory. Come on, say victory. 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 Some of you are old enough to remember V-Day. Is anybody old? Well, you don't have to raise your hand. I know some of you are old enough to remember V-Day. It was in 1945. Praise the Lord. Somebody might have, some of you might have been children then. But V-Day meant Victory Day when the Nazis surrendered in, uh, in Europe. So te technically some people call it V-E Day because that stands for Victory in Europe Day. And then... Uh, my father, he's gone on to heaven, but he remembered VJ Day. That's victory over Japan. That was in August of 45. Well, today is victory day for you. Come on now. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And if the Lord made this day, he made it to be a day of victory. Everybody say victory. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The devil didn't make this day. Actually, the devil hadn't made any day, which means the devil doesn't get to enforce his will on you. Defeat is the will of the devil. Never accept defeat. We don't bow to the will of the devil. Come on now. Victory is the will of God for you. Victory is the will of God for you. There's one thing that Jesus wants to give you, and that's victory. Glory to God. Amen. I, I just feel good saying that. I'm going to say it again. There's one thing Jesus wants to give you, and that's victory. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, the Bible says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that word gives is in the present tense. He gives me victory. So if, if I'm alive today and I am, he gives me, what does he give me today? Victory. Tomorrow, what's he going to give me? Victory. Amen. Uh, Friday, when I wake up, what's he going to give me? Victory. Saturday, what's he going to give me? Victory. Sunday morning, what's he going to give me? Victory. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. That's an, actually an old hymn. Uh, the church is one foundation. From victory unto victory. His army shall he lead. You, ever, you never sang that hymn. 
Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Victory. Everybody say victory. So, so Jesus doesn't want you to have any defeated days. He wants you to have victory today, victory tomorrow. And you say, well, what about tests and trials? He wants you to have victory in every test, victory in every trial, victory. Everybody say victory. And uh, somebody said, well, it's a good day. Uh, every day that you're above ground, it's a good day. Somebody told me that recently. And uh, I said, you know what? I said, I don't think so. Because they're thinking, well, if you die, then it's not a good day. I said, that's a lie. Uh, the day I die, actually, my body will flop down on the floor, but I'm going to be with Jesus. Doesn't the Bible say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? Doesn't the Bible say, in the words of the Apostle Paul, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better? So that means every day from here on to eternity is a good day. Every single day, including the day that I go to heaven. That's a good day. Actually, it's a very good day. Jesus wants us to go to heaven. Amen. So I'm not going to have any bad days. Amen. Somebody says, well, you're you. I don't know about all that. Well, look at 1 Corinthians 15, start at verse 54. So when this, in, when this corruptible mortal body shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. I like that word, victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So on that day, when the trumpet sounds and the Lord returns with a shout and the voice of the archangel, on that day, he'll give us victory that day. But until then, he gives us victory. He gives us victory. That's, that's verse 57. He gives us the victory. It doesn't say he will give us victory on the last day. He says he gives us victory today. Well, victory, if he gives it, then I take it and I have it. Amen. Victory, victory, victory. Everybody say victory again. Not just one victory. Let's work with it now. Come on. One victory is good. I mean, it beats not having any victory. But he says he gives us victory continuously, not just occasional victory, not just partial victory, not just temporary victory. Come on now, I'm going to get happy now. He gives us total victory, continuous victory, absolute victory, perpetual victory. You came to the right place. Amen. He gives us the victory. Look at 1 John 5 verse 4. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you might say, I, I needed this tonight. I was, came in feeling a little low. Well, you're going to leave here shouting with doilette. Amen. First John 5, 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So who's whatsoever, that's you. Whatever is born of God, you and I are born of God. And the Bible says we overcome the world. That means we overcome fear because fear is part of this world. That means we overcome anxiety and dread and despair. Come on now. We overcome depression. We overcome addiction. We overcome sin. We overcome the devil. We overcome disease. We overcome all the works of the devil. Anything that's in this world, we overcome it. You say, well, how? This is the victory. That overcomes the world, even our faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. If you want victory, if you want to taste victory, you've got to walk by faith. It's not enough to be sincere. You've got to believe God. And by believing God, I mean believing him in the face of negative feelings, in the face of negative circumstances, in the face of Maybe a president you don't like in the face of an, a gas prices no one likes. Well, maybe a few people like them. God help their souls. But I digress. i got to stay on main track here. I'm going to speak faith. I'm going to speak faith every day because I want victory 
every day. Amen. My faith is the victory. Come on, say it with me. My faith is the victory. Say it again. My faith is the victory. So there it is. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I'm so glad he told me what the victory is. It's good to have hope, but faith gives substance to what we hope for. Amen? So don't throw hope away, but uh, make sure you add faith to your hopes. So I am a believer. So are you, aren't you? You, you, You're in church. You ought to be a believer. You believe in that Jesus is the Son of God. The next verse says, who is this that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you? Come on. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, that he shed his precious sinless blood on Calvary's cross, that he died for my sin to bring us close to God, that God raised him from the dead. I believe that. You say, have you seen Jesus? I've seen him in this book. I've seen him in the Bible. Amen. I haven't seen him with my physical eyes, but I know he's real. I know he loves me. I, I'm, this is not a matter of feeling. This is a matter of knowing. Amen. Feelings make good followers, they make horrible leaders. That's something for you to cogitate about. God did not give you feelings to, be, to lead you around. That, that would lead you into, you'll become a, a basket case if that happens. Your feelings are your followers. They follow. You lead. The Word of God is the leader. And, and your faith leads and feelings follow. I remember years ago, I, had, I saw this little drawing of a train. It said that the, it went fact, faith, feeling. And feeling was the little caboose. And fact was the Bible, the engine. And then faith was the, was the, the rail cars. And then the little, end, the, little, the little caboose at the end was feeling. So that's a good order for you to remember. Fact of God's word. My faith is in the facts. And my feelings follow. Amen. If you give voice to what you feel, you've put the caboose first. If you give voice to what you know, your feelings will change. What do I know? I know book, chapter, and verse. I know what God said is the absolute truth. So if I give voice to what I know, then my feelings are going to change. That's how God wired it to work. Your, God designed you so that what you feel would be based on what comes out of your mouth. And what, you come, and what comes out of your mouth should be based on what's come out of God's mouth. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's a good thing to say when gas goes up high and groceries double. And I was going to say certain people's names, but when certain people lie to you and tell you inflation is this and you know good, well, and true, it's way more than that. The Lord is my shepherd. Though men lie to me, the Lord never lies. He cannot lie. So I put my faith in the facts of his word. I put my mouth in line with his word. Feelings change. And then my circumstances change because I'm speaking what God speaks. So I'm a believer. Everybody say, I'm a believer. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That means I'm a victor, not a victim. Amen. I'm an overcomer because the victorious one lives in me. Jesus is the ultimate victor. Amen. Jesus is the ultimate victor. Why? Because he conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered the devil. Amen. Well, where does Jesus live? He lives in you. The victor with the victory lives inside you. Now, the only thing that's going to lose tonight is (laughs) self-pity. You're not going to be able to keep self-pity and walk in victory at the same time. It's it's impossible. It's like, uh, you know, one day I was saying, uh, I said, uh, I said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I was sort of sad when I said it. But I remembered that song, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so I remembered to say that, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And it was like the Lord was saying, well, uh, 
you can't be sad and be strong at the same time. So <laughs> it was like the Lord was saying, I'd appreciate it if you would smile and rejoice. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, I want to be strong. Does anybody else want to be strong? I want to be strong. Well, if I, in order to be strong, I have to rejoice. Well, Brother Carl, it's a little hard to rejoice with everything going on outside. The Bible doesn't say rejoice in circumstances. It says rejoice. It says rejoice in the Lord in Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That means my joy is based on Jesus. Well, that just changed everything. Because there's everything in Jesus to make me joyful. Jesus Christ redeem me from the curse of the law. That means he doesn't want me to be cursed. He doesn't want my days to be cursed. Come on now. Jesus wants me to have victory over the curse, which is why he purchased my freedom from the curse. Amen? Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Now, the, the first thing that we need to possess is our identity in Christ. I am who God says I am. That's why I'm going a little slow. I'm a believer. You remember 2 Corinthians? You say, where do you get this stuff that you're a believer? Well, look at 2 Corinthians. Some of you giving me puzzled looks will we'll help your puzzlement. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, be not equally yoked together with unbelievers. Well, I'm not supposed to be linked with unbelievers. My wife is a believer. The opposite of an unbeliever is a believer. I'm a believer. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Well, you say you're righteous, Carl? By the blood of Jesus, you better believe it. That's the only way any of us are righteous. What communion hath light with darkness? Jesus said you're the light of the world. Amen. What concord hath Christ with Belial? That's the devil. Well, we're the body of Christ. Gerald is my friend, and I notice his body goes by the same name as his head. He doesn't say, my, name, my head's name is Gerald, and my body's name is Filbert McGee. No, it's just Gerald from head to toe. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm, we're the body of Christ. We identify with Jesus Christ. What part he that believeth with an infidel? God help the infidels. And we claim their deliverance from that lying deception in the name of Jesus. Amen. But we, we, we are those that believe. I'm a believer. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So I identify as a child of God. I identify as a believer. I identify as a righteous saint. I identify as a new creature. I identify as an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Now, fasten your seatbelts. Transgenderism is a demonic counterfeit for our supernatural identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't stutter. Transgenderism and all the insanity of wokeism and people identifying as a cat and a man identifying as a woman. It's a demonic counterfeit. It's straight from hell. And it's a demonic counterfeit of our supernatural identity in Christ Jesus. Let me introduce you to yourself. You're not who you are on the outside. That's just part of your identity. You are a thousand times bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. You, you're indwelt by the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on now. You're a believer. Amen. You're not a possum. Amen. I didn't even, at least I gave myself an amen. I am not a possum. I do not identify as a possum. A possum rolls over and plays dead. That's not us. I have on the armor of God. And we have the sword of the spirit, which is the spoken word of God. And if we'll put that word of God in our mouth, the devil will lie, over, will lie down and say, cry for mercy. 
But I love what Joshua told his men to do. He said, come near and put your foot on the necks of these kings. You read it in the book of Joshua. Chapter, it was around chapter 9 and 10. But the kings were defeated, and, and, and Joshua made them lie down, face down. And Joshua put his foot on the neck of those kings. That's a type of Jesus putting his foot on the devil's neck. And Jesus says, come near and put your foot on the devil's neck. The one place the devil belongs is under your feet. Amen. We're not trying to get the victory. Jesus got the victory for us. And he says, you possess what I've given you. Victory is inside you. You say, how do I get it on the outside? You speak it out. You say, victory, victory, victory in the face of the devil. Victory is mine. Victory is mine in the face of the devil. That's how you get what's on the inside to get out on the outside where you need it. Let me give you an illustration that this should help you. About the difference between ownership and possession. About last September, my wife ordered two bookcases. Praise the Lord. We need two bookcases because I have a lot of books. We got one bookcase. It took two months for... For the bookcases to come in. But we paid for them in September. When did we own them? Thank you, Doylette. We owned them when she gave the credit card. <laughs> and they did that little, they inserted the credit card into that little credit card reader. And at that moment, Carl was the proud owner of two bookcases. And I actually had to pay him for them before I even got the first one. So the first one came in. Well, the first, they came in at the same time, except the second one was damaged. It was just beat up. It looked like it had been in a fight and lost. And so they said, um, we'll get you another one. I said, that's wonderful. And they said, um, I said to them, when will it come in? When will I be able to possess it? They said, well, end of December. I said, oh, that's a little long. I said, but, uh, you know, we paid for this in September. Now it's at the end of October, and you're saying it's going to be at the end of December. So December comes and goes, and in January, the first week, I called, and I said, hello, it's me. Um, I'm not calling to get my bookcase, or I'm not calling because I don't own a bookcase. I'm calling because I do own it, and I want to possess it. Follow that? Well, they say, well, we don't have it. It's on a, a boat somewhere off of Shanghai. I said, praise the Lord. They said, when, when will it? I said, when can you project that it might show up? They said, well, we don't know. Our best guess is the end of March. I said, praise the Lord. I, at that moment, I still owned it, right? But it's off. It's on. It's floating in the harbor off of Shanghai. April came. I gave him a call. I said, hello, it's me. <laughs> you have any idea where my bookcase is? We finally got the bookcase sometime in May. Praise the Lord. Up until then, my books were in the floor. Amen. And we would cover them with a blanket and uh, when the grandkids would come over. So they wouldn't just, you know, start throwing the books everywhere because they hadn't figured out that certain things you don't use anyway. They're learning. They're on a learning curve. Amen. My point is this. We owned two bookcases. When? In September. When we paid for them. We didn't possess both of them until May, which was a long time later. So until we possessed them, we didn't really enjoy it, although I knew I had them. And so... I want you to think of it this way. When Jesus died on the cross, he purchased not just bookcases. He purchased eternal life for me. He purchased healing for me. He purchased good vision, good hearing. He purchased it. Well, if he purchased it and gave it to me, then I owned it. I've owned it since he died and rose again. 
Am I right about that? Now, it's up to me to possess what I own. I own it because he bought it and paid and gave it to me. It'd just be like if Gerald said, you know, Carl, I, uh, I just like you so much, I'm going to uh, buy you a pair of shoes. And he said, I said, praise the Lord. Well, if he pays for them, I own them if he gives them to me. It's, that, it's just that simple. Let me give you another illustration. The Bible talks about an inheritance, right? Well, if someone names you in a will and they die, at that moment you own whatever it is that they willed you to have. I had an auntie years ago. She, lo- she willed that I uh, get $2,000. I was so happy. This is back in the 70s, and uh, I, I put it toward my college. But, it, but when she died and that will went into effect, I owned that money. Now, it, it took a few months before I possessed it because it had to go through different stages, and I had to prove that I was me. <laughs> I mean, you know, I wouldn't want it to just wind up in Johnny's hands, you know. So I, I had to say, you know, this is me. This is really me. So when, when Jesus died, the will of God went into effect. The Bible calls us heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Now, when does the will go into effect? When you die or when Jesus died? Well, based on what I understand, that $2,000 became mine when my aunt died. I didn't have to die to get that money. She had to die. And don't worry, as she was in Missouri and I was in New Jersey. I didn't, you know, she died of natural causes. So don't get your Perry Mason antennas out and say, I knew there was a reason. That just, you know, see, some of y'all's minds just went to Perry Mason. <laughs> victory, victory. Everybody say victory, 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 victory. Victory over rabbit trails. I'm tr- honey, I'm trying to keep this humorous, you know, so that people grab hold of this. If you have an inheritance, that means you have legal right to what was willed to you. That's what I'm saying. Who would like to cheat you out of that, do you suppose? The devil. This Bible is a legal document. It is called the the New Testament of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? I'm going to turn it over to here. You are familiar with that, right? It says the New Testament. What is a testament? That's the will. The new will. So this book is legal document, and it says you own, you own healing. You own salvation. You own peace. You own joy. You own provision. You own protection. You have victory. It's all yours. The devil wants you, in the name of religion, To accept something less than what Jesus willed you to have. And I say no, 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 no. Now, a lot's been said in different church circles about tests and trials. This is my take on tests and trials. When gas doubles, when eggs and bread double in price, that's not 8% inflation. The test is... Will you still obey God? Will you still tithe? The test is, will you still give offerings to support missionaries? That's the test. When you're being squeezed, will you still obey God? Or will you say, well, God, uh, I'm not tithing anymore because gas doubled. See, the test is, will you obey God? The second test is, what will you say when COVID hits and variants hit? Will you still speak the word of God? I refuse to be sick. I refuse to have what the world's having. I put the blood of Jesus over me in the name of Jesus. That's the test. Will I believe God? Will I obey God? No matter how bad it gets. Even if things go wrong. I keep saying the life of Jesus is manifest in my body. About a month ago, I did some yard work for my sister-in-law and my brother. She is my sister-in-law, right? Yeah. And uh, they said I did a great job uh, because I love to do yard work. 
But they had some poison oak. Oh, my goodness. And some of you are, you know, I suffered terribly for about two weeks of that. Went through a tube of Iva rest. Thank you, Chris Little. Amen. And, uh, but I'm free. Praise God. And uh, my wife said, you know, if you'd learn your lesson, you know, wear long pants. And so, um, I hate to admit this publicly. Oh, this hurts. But I didn't listen to my wife. And so I did some yard work. Uh, I'm not allowed to say this, but I, at the uh, Livonia Elementary School, they had a dead limb on one of their trees, and no one takes care of that little, it's a little fenced area next to the school where the drive turnaround is. So I chopped the limb off, and I limbed up the trees and, and cleared out the underbrush, and I was wearing shorts. I would like to say that after the second time, I did listen to my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, anyway, the third time when I did some yard work, I put on long pants. Amen. Some of us are slow learners. But God is merciful, and my wife just says, dear Jesus, please help this man. So it's good to listen to your wife. Amen. But as, uh, what was I, why did I say all that? Because he, sometimes we bring things on ourselves, right? But I said, no, even though I've done something stupid, I'm asking for mercy. Let's, let's make it spiritual now because I, I know you all aren't perfected saints yet, and occasionally we may all do something that's dumb. But I said, Lord, have mercy on me, and I put the blood of Jesus over my body in the name of Jesus. And when the doubt now... I'm going to, I got to get to Hezekiah. I've got to speed up somehow. Hezekiah was given a bad report. He was told in the story, the story is in 2 Kings chapter 19. He was told that Sennacherib with the armies of Assyria was camped at his doorstep. That would be like saying China has invaded the United States and they're about to take over Livonia. Okay, so I mean, that's the magnitude of what was against Hezekiah. He was up against the number one world power at that time, which was Assyria. The king of Assyria was Sennacherib, and Sennacherib had written a nasty letter insulting the Lord God, the God of Israel. And I love what Hezekiah did. The Bible says in 2 Kings 19, he spread the letter out before the Lord. He prayed. He went into the holy place. He, and he lay, he, the Bible, actually 2 Kings 19, verse 14, he spread it out before the Lord. Now, this is what I want you to do with that doctor's report that says you're legally blind or any other thing that the doctor says. You spread it out before the Lord. Some of you don't look like I, I'm not making scripture up. Give me some credit now. But I, since you're a little quizzical, look at 2 Kings 19, verse 14. Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And he said, Lord, here, I want you to read this. Your word on top of this word. So here's the doctor's report that labels you legally blind. And you say, Lord, I put your word on top of that word. Your word declares with the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. Your word declares you took my infirmities, bear my sicknesses. Your word declares you redeemed me from the curse. I put your word on top of that word. Amen. That's how you get victory. That's how Hezekiah got victory. As a result of his prayer, God sent one angel, and one angel killed 185,000 soldiers in one night. And Hezekiah uh, was saved, and Sennacherib went home, and uh, his sons uh, assassinated him. That's, that's getting a little further afield. In the very next chapter, the word of the Lord came to Hezekiah through the prophet Isaiah, who's one of the great men of human history. And God said to, to Hezekiah, set your house in order. Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die 
and not live. Whew. Now you would think that... <laughs> well, you know what Hezekiah did? He turned his face to the wall. And he cried out to God for mercy. And I believe he made a vow to obey God and to serve God. Unfortunately, he broke that vow out of his pride, but that's a whole separate story. But God, but the Bible says that Hezekiah was sick. And the word of the Lord came to him through Isaiah, thus saith the Lord. I mean, if the Lord says you're going to die, you'd think it's over. What God, but God didn't want Hezekiah to die. At that time, he was only 39. God didn't want Hezekiah to die. You say, well, but, but, you, you, but you just quoted the scripture. It said that God said, you shall die. It, God didn't say, I want you to die. He said, you shall die. In other words, as things stand right now, you shall die. And Hezekiah said, well, we need to change the way things are. He humbled himself. He didn't turn to Isaiah for help. Isaiah delivered the, the verdict. <laughs> And Hezekiah went straight to God. He, the, look at 2 Kings 20, verse 1 and 2. I shouldn't have closed there. All right, I gotta, I'm going to get somewhere here. Look at this. 2 Kings chapter 20. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amoz, came to him and saith unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then turned he his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He turned away from Isaiah. He turned away from his own suffering. He turned away from his own doctors. He turned away from his own relatives. He turned away from sympathizing folks and friends. He turned away from everything. He turned his face to the wall. And when, he, when his face was against the wall, he only saw one thing, and that was God. He humbled himself. He cried for mercy. And God reversed the disease. God reversed his own decree. And God reversed the whole universe for 10 degrees. God can reverse the curse, brother. God can reverse the curse, my sister. God reversed three things. He reversed the disease because Hezekiah got healed. He reversed his own decree because Hezekiah humbled himself. And he reversed the universe. Remember, God gave him that sign. He said, I want the sundial to go back. And God said, I made this thing. I can put it in forward. I can put it in reverse, baby. <laughs> you want it to go back? It'll go back. You say, how, did, how do you do that? Yeah, I'm not smart enough. But some, some of you who major in physics and chemistry might be able to figure out how God did it. God might, be, might tell you in eternity, this is what I did. And you might say, whoa, God, you are really smart. I'm too smart to be an atheist. You know, Stephen Hawking is supposedly one of the smartest people that ever lived. He was really stupid because he said that he was an atheist. The Bible says the fool says in his heart there's no God. So I don't listen to fools. What am I saying? Hezekiah changed. He humbled himself. He cried for mercy. He made a new vow, and he believed God. And God changed his own word. Now, whew, what am I saying? Never accept defeat. We own the victory. We have the victory. We're not trying to get it. What we're possessing what we own. Remember my back to my bookcases? I didn't call them because I didn't own. I called because I owned and I'd paid four months earlier. I'd called because I paid eight months earlier. Well, we need to say, hey, Jesus has already paid. If I could go back to my World War II uh, analogy, the crucifixion when Jesus died, that was D-Day. 
That was the decision day when Jesus went all in for our salvation. And the resurrection is V-Day when he won the victory. Glory to Jesus. Jesus conquered the devil. You are in him. He is in you. And therefore, the victory you want is in you. All right, I got to make sure I got. Oh, here's another good statement. This is a good one. The spirit of faith is the spirit of victory. You like that? The Apostle Paul said, we have the same spirit of faith. We, are, we began by saying this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Well, faith isn't just a subject that we study. Faith, this is a simple analogy, is like a living plant in your soul. It's a living thing. If you have a plant in your house, and it's not a fake plant, but it's a real plant, you take care of it, don't you? You, you have a certain schedule, you water it, you fertilize it. Am I right? Well, the spirit of faith has to be nurtured. You don't want to pour Roundup on it. <laughs> That'd just kill it. And so if you have the spirit of faith, you have to protect it. You say, how do I protect it? Well, our plants all get some sunshine. You've got to worship Jesus. You've got to... And not just Sunday morning. Sunday morning, we do that just to celebrate God. But you, you've got to worship Jesus on Monday. Tomorrow morning, before you get out of the bed, just say, Lord, I worship you. Father, I worship you. Oh, you're my creator. You're so good to me. I worship you, Father God. And you just carry on that way. And you say, Lord, you're faithful. I worship you, Jesus. So plants need that sunshine. And that's, that's the presence of Jesus. Amen. You've got to protect that plant. Then you've got to feed it on the word of God. And, if some, and, and you've got to be careful because everybody doesn't teach faith. They ought to because the Bible, this is, the Bible is called the word of faith. In Romans 10, it says the word of faith that we preach. Well, if some, if some supposed Bible teacher puts an unbible name on you, you rip it off and you, you reject it and you throw it away. Say, no, I'm not wearing that. I identify, I identify as a believer. I am an overcomer. I am a victor, not a victim. I am the seed of Abraham. Glory to Jesus. Amen. If you don't identify as in covenant with God, you'll end up being a spectator when you're supposed to be a soldier. Remember David and Goliath? And, and uh, this will actually tie in perfect with what Pastor Adam and Tina said Sunday. David was the only one who identified properly. He said, I am in covenant with God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who doesn't have a covenant? Because the circumcision was a sign of the old covenant. We have a better covenant. But David said, I am a covenant man. Any of those Israelites could have taken out Goliath. I'll prove it to you. Goliath had four brothers. That's why David brought five smooth stones. David said, I'm going to kill all of them. Well, actually, David didn't, but his men that he trained killed the other four. And they were in that group that day. So you look at it, you just study it out. He had some of you nodding. You've read that story that David's mighty men, those four men, killed those other four giants. They came and they started, they, they, they got the spirit of faith that was in David. They said, oh, we've got that living, faith is a living thing. It's in my soul, it's growing. And David taught me how to worship God. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, Lord Jesus, you're my shepherd. You are my light and my salvation. I love you, Lord, my strength. David taught those, boy, those men how to worship, how to identify themselves. As covenant men, amen? And they became giant killers. They did exploits. And they conquered, they conquered whole enemy armies. The apostle Paul said, we have the same spirit of faith. And what's one of our favorite verses? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, because people are so stupid today, You have to actually redefine that and say, I can do all the will of God for my life through Christ who strengthens me because I had a brother Christian who didn't go to this church. Relax. But he said, Carl, can you get pregnant? 
You said you can do all things. Can, can you get pregnant? Huh? I said, dear Jesus. Some people don't have enough intelligence. Never mind. I shouldn't go there. This is, you, you can't listen to CNN and secular news and, and preserve your intelligence. I'll just tell you that right now. You, you can't do it. It will be destroyed. Your IQ will drop to zero, and, and we'll have to help you get in out of the rain. <laughs> but you, you, if, you've got to listen to the Bible. You've got to tune out voices that are contrary to the Bible. Amen. I, I, have I, thanks be to God who gives me the victory. So I say, I can do all the will of God, the big stuff and the little stuff, through Christ who strengthens me, who puts his own strength inside me. That's victory talk. That's how you get through the week, brother. Amen. That's how you get through the week, sister. You don't try to do it in your own strength. You do it in his strength, and you activate his power by what comes out your mouth. You've got to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I possess what I own. I possess what Jesus purchased with his precious blood. It's mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. According to God's word, I have what I say. Victory today is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing today is mine. According to God's word, I have what I say. Healing today is mine. Anybody ever heard that song? Well, you just did. Amen. How about, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever? That's a good hymn. We ought to sing that one. Where's Tanner? Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, I just got a good thought for you. As long as there's power in the blood of Jesus, you can have victory. As long as there's power in the blood of Jesus, you can have victory. Now, I've asked you a question. Oh, great scholars. When will the blood lose its power? Tell me. Please tell me. Will it lose power tomorrow? Will it lose power when the next damnable virus from hell is unleashed on humanity? Will it lose its power then? No, it won't. The blood will never lose its power. Then I walk in victory. I walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. The issue is, what can you believe? Well, I can believe everything that God wrote in this book because I'm a believer. Sometimes my wife will say, can you believe can you believe that it's 90 degrees out? I say, yeah, I can believe that. I'm a believer. It's summer. Can you, can you believe? Can you believe that, uh, you're, you're, uh, uh, that it's already August? Yes, I can. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I, I don't believe in Santa Claus, but I believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't believe in nonsense. I believe in, in the Gospels. Amen. All right. All right, it's time to shout. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet. Your Father, Jesus took our sin. He also took our sickness. And what he bore, we need not bear. Father, we are washed in his blood. Our sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus purifies us right now from every sin. 
And we thank you that you heal all our diseases. You forgive all our sin. You heal all our diseases. Father, we thank you. We receive our healing today. Say it to yourself. I receive my healing right now. I receive my healing right now. I appropriate your word. I claim your word. Your word belongs to me. Hallelujah. I am your child. Hallelujah. I believe I receive healing today for my physical body. I believe, say it with me. I believe I receive healing today for my physical body. I receive the life of Jesus in my body. I turn my face to the wall, Father. I turn my face away from man and doctor's reports. I put your word on every evil report that's been spoken against me. You are the faithful God. Your word is true. I receive right now, and I thank you for my healing right right now. I worship you, Lord. I magnify the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I have the victory. Come on and praise him with me. I thank you, Lord. I have the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. The, oh, hallelujah. Victory today is mine. The devil is defeated out of my life. Devil, get out of my body. Get out of my mind. Get out in the name of Jesus and stay out. I am washed in the blood. I am purchased by the blood. Oh, I am protected by the blood. I thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. You say, what are you doing? Ha, ha, ha. I'm saying ha, 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 because when you have the victory, you say ha, 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 ha. I'm not losing. Devil, that means you lose. Come on now. If you win, that means the devil loses, and you look down at him and say ha, 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 devil. Ha, 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 devil. You're not going to steal my sight. You're not going to steal my my hearing. You're not going to steal my money. You're not going to steal my children. You're not going to steal my nephew. You're not going to steal any part of my future. You're not going to steal anything from me, devil. You're not going to steal my nation. This nation is one nation under God. This nation is not the land of atheistic communism, devil. This nation is one nation under God. And you'll not steal it, devil. You won't steal it. No. We thank you, Father God. Oh, come on and just thank God again. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mo shambrasa. Oh, come on. Put your right foot down on the ground and say, yeah, my foot's on the devil's neck in the name of Jesus. And I have the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. No weapon formed against me prospers. Hallelujah. Jesus lives in me. And he's greater than every weapon the devil has. Jesus is the greatest one. He lives in me. He's greater than all the forces of hell. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Now, that's what you do every day. You say, what's going to change? Your body's going to change. Your body's going to change. The life of Jesus will be manifest in your body. Your money will change. Your future is going to be brighter. You're going to have uh, an uplift in your spirit because your mouth is now tuned to his word. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just got a good example, uh, illustration in my mind. Have you ever been to a, even this is a high, could be a high school band or some of you might even been to an opera where before they start, they're all tuning their instruments. And it's a, this is a big word now, a cacophony, a clashing of sounds. The flute is playing in one key. The trumpets are playing in some other key. Everybody's playing in a key of their own choosing, and it is a disaster. And you think, dear God, I paid money to listen to this. I'm going to have to endure this for another hour. I can't, I can't take two minutes of this. This is awful. And then the blessed moment happens when the conductor starts conducting and everyone starts playing in beautiful harmony. You ready? The Holy Spirit is the conductor. Your mouth is your instrument. The score is the word of the living God. 
the score, for those of you who are not musically, uh, who are musically illiterate, is the, the pages on which the notes are written. It's called the score. My mother was a church pianist for 50 years. I did not inherit her musical talent, but I did learn that. The Bible is the score. The Holy Spirit is the conductor, and it's up to you and me to tune our mouth to this book. God help us if we all just speak out of our feelings. It will be a disaster. Let's speak victory, because that's what Jesus gives us. Victory. Everybody say victory. Amen. Tune your mouth to victory. Amen. Prophesy victory. Amen. Let's get in harmony and speak victory. And when, 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 when things are tough, we stand with you and we speak victory. Amen. I love you. And uh, glory to God. Amen. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord who fights and wins is with us. Amen. You like that? That's good. All right. I love you all. And uh, as you go, just look at your neighbor and say, God is good. God is good. He cannot lie. He will not fail. He does not change. You've got the victory. Come on now. Amen. Preach to him a little bit.